few moments ago you talked about ADD. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, teens that are experiencing difficulty, not because they're misbehaving, but because their brains are wired a little differently and they process information in a different way, which is hard for some people to deal with. My, I'm going to say my theory, but I'm sure it's not just mine. I, I think that kids with ADD, not just teens, but all kids with ADD, ADHD, or at least most of them, have sort of a, a inner seismograph. And whenever there's some bumps in the road, either at home or in society or in the classroom, they're going to detect it um, either sooner or they're going detect to it, detect it in a much more in a much stronger way. So they will react. And that's what they're reacting to. They're not reacting because you suck or this sucks or, or because they're, they're bored or because they hate this or hate that. They may say that, but that's because they don't have the, the emotional range or the language to say what's really going on. So if we can look at kids with ADD as, as being barometers for whether our, our lives are in balance, it's a whole new world there. So if you had one bit of advice for a teenager who's struggling with uh, um, communicating with his or her parents, what would that be? A very good question. I, I almost want to say that I want the parents to do the work in that situation because kids aren't always listened to. Kids are listened to less than parents think. Parents usually think that the kid isn't listening to them when actually, in my experience, it's the parent not listening to the kid. If you want your child to talk to you, you need to stop talking and start listening. And then they will start talking to you. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really hard to tell a teen, try this if the parents aren't on board also. Let's talk a little bit about what do families typically come to you for help with? What, I mean, what is the underlying major issue that usually brings parents to you? Right. Well, usually it's, it's what we've talked about. Is there, there's a communication gap, and so they, there's a lot of confusion going on. It's something about rules and consequences. So there's chaos in the family because the rules and consequences aren't clear. Or there's an issue of ADD in somebody in the family, and, and instead of that person being labeled the troublemaker of the family, we look at the whole family. Because if one person has ADD, it's affecting almost the whole family, if not the whole family. And some of the ADD issues could be a self-esteem issue, it could be underachieving, it could be acting out a lot. So there's all of those. Those are the most common. And then let's talk a little bit about what kind of a message do you like to give to families? A message of hope? Absolutely a message of hope. That's one of my core values is hope and optimism and empowerment. I, I believe that Conventional wisdom, we've been listening too much to it. And conventional wisdom has been for ages and ages that teens and parents don't get along. And that when you hit adolescence, there's going to be drama and confusion and frustration and anger. I mean, even when you talk to people about, well, I work with teens, they laugh because they've heard that conventional wisdom also. And, and my point of view is, why are we listening to the conventional wisdom? That is taking control of us. I say, let's throw that out. I believe that parents and teens can get along just fine. Of course, when you're living with someone, there are always bumps in the road. But that drama and stuff, that's hooey. Let's throw that out. Earlier you mentioned that you provide a skill set for parents. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you go into that just a little bit so that any parent watching this video can get a sense of what skill set might I find strength in through working with Margaret? Sure. Well, let's say we're talking about communication. So I am going to then teach them how they can, and we'll do some practice over the phone or in person, we'll be acting it out sort of, um, practice as to how to communicate effectively. And when I say, a parent might say, when I say this, I always get this response. Well, let's try a different way. So it's those kind of skills, literally teaching how to communicate or literally teaching how to set up rules that fit your family's values not somebody else's families, but absolutely for your family, completely tailored for your family. And a little bit ago, we talked about um, expectations and, and outcomes. And 
we also uh, discussed um, about how families tend to be focused on the struggle that they're in right now mm -hmm. and maybe they need to go back to a happy time. How, how do families find that? Well, one easy way to do it is to just look at what works for your family, not what works for the parents, but when is your family the happiest, for instance? When does your family feel most like a family? And you can go back to, you know, trips to the zoo when, you know, when you had a toddler. It can be anything. And to start to recreate that, what was the scenario? Literally, what was the scenario? Um, were there cell phones involved? Probably not. <laughs> were there, were there, good foods involved probably literally taking it apart and looking at what worked about it and and what was not there that has now been interrupting your life things like cell phones for instance and then you can recreate some of those moments making rules about no cell phones when we're in a family discussion or no, no, exactly. no cell, phone, cell phones when we are in motion as a family because there's nothing more annoying than to be engaged with somebody or thinking you are and somebody's texting yeah. it's because then they're yeah. they're not engaged correct right or nobody no including the parents nobody answers the phone when we have a family night and we're all watching a DVD together nobody gets to answer the phone and so that the rules don't just apply to the teens it's also the parents that are following rules also that goes a long way to impressing a teen you're all about making life easier for families, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, yes. yes. So how does a family engage with you? How do they typically find you? Usually it's word of mouth. Mm -hmm. They have a friend that's used my services, and they've gotten rave reviews, and they've passed it along to somebody else. They could read my blog online, for instance, or articles. They can find me in a variety of different ways, but usually it's word of mouth. And is there anything else that you'd like to say to families that are perhaps in struggle right now? I would just like to say that it's really important that you reach out and get some help because it's easier than you think it is. And if you take the point of view that it's a phase and it will pass, you're going to be, my guess is, you're going to be unhappy while that phase is waiting to pass. You don't have to be unhappy. You could be happy right now if you would reach out to each other as other parents, start a parent group, reach out to the counselors or the principal at your child's school or the teachers, reach out to professionals, reach out to me. I would like to see every parent and every family be happy with each other. Well, thank you so much for visiting with us today, Margaret. I, I just really appreciate all of your insights in teens, and this will definitely help families get back on track, back to the harmony in the home. So thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you for having me today. You're very welcome. And thank you for joining us on BizTalk with Zita. I hope you'll join us again for another episode.